still, you know, we're doing a little bit of ball, which is nice. Right, right. Love it. You guys, uh, man, uh, all, all the respect to you guys uh, every year. You know, you're just balling out and and uh, and guys are guys are uh, going on to the next level in your program and, and you got it going on. So so uh, great job. Thanks, coach. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, we've got the chat function down so that the the coaches uh, can 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 throw out a question. If however you want to handle that, coach, you can uh, take a few questions as you go, or you know, a lot of the guys are taking them at the end. You know, so however you want to manage, that's up to you. So uh, I'll shut the heck up and uh, coach Maddich, uh, take it away, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Cam, and, and uh, uh, real man, thank you for having me. This is such an honor. Uh, this unique platform is a great job this entire network has done and, and what you're doing to try to raise money for food and, and helping out during this cause, and I hope that everybody's able to go in and donate to that. It's a, it's a really neat thing for us to talk ball, and uh, it's a little weird. You know, I'm not, I'm not used to this uh, thing. I'm used to eyeballs looking at me and, and being able to interact with people, so We'll see how this goes. Um, haven't done this format in terms of this presentation, so we're going to talk a little old line ball today. So I hope you get a little bit of something out of this. So I'm going to share my screen, and we'll get locked and loaded. We got you. Okay, so I hope you guys can all see that. Yeah, yeah, we got you. we got you. You're good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna talk we're talk about uh, offensive line play and the triple option, primarily versus an odd front. Uh, this is the request that we get the most in terms of what we do. Obviously, triple options and all we do, but um, you know it's the base foundation of who we are. Uh, there's my name on there, all my information. So Brandon Maddich, I'm the head football coach at East High School. My cell number is on there. Please take that down, screenshot it, whatever you need to do. My personal email is triple option three, which I know makes sense. And then uh, brandon.madich at slcschools.org is my work number. And then my Twitter handle is at Coach B. Maddich. And so you can put that down, DM me. Um, we will be uh, an open book for you and whatever you need. If there's questions that you have after this presentation, you want to hit me up, you want to learn more about uh, our outside beer, our midline stuff, our play action pass, anything defensively, please, man, don't hesitate. We love talking ball and giving any information that we may have. Okay, so here is my presentation outline. Um, and we'll have some videos some film that I put together to show you guys to kind of simulate what we're talking about here. So the first thing we're talking about is defining our, our, our identity and who our offensive line is, our offensive line creed, our huddle, which I know is a different term nowadays, but not only do we huddle, we have a unique huddle. Our sprint to the line of scrimmage, our stance work, communication at the line, um, our cadence, line splits, 4560, which I heard um, Coach Allenbaugh eloquently talk about yesterday. He doesn't use those terms, but it'll be very much the same. We just have different numbers that approach it the same way. Gap combo backer, our rules, triple versus a 5-2, combo triple versus a 5-2, and then what we call tech versus a 5-2. So that's our outline for today. But a little bit about us. Now, this is not important, but it gives you an idea if you've never heard of us because we are primarily not known as a football school, but mostly known uh, for that cult following movie, uh, High School Musical, and uh, uh, the new series on Disney. They film all those shows, all those uh, series shows at uh, at East High School. So we're more known for that when we are football. We're trying to change that culture. So we're a triple option team, obviously, hence the title. Uh, we had 7,438 yards of offense. 6,900 of those were on the ground. We've led the nation. Uh, we've led the nation rushing several times, and we have pulled several Utah State records. We averaged 49.6 points per game, and this is running the ball. I mean, if we throw the ball five times, now we're, we're, we consider ourselves opening it up. But I will say this, we do have some young guys that can really spin it, so we're kind of excited about the new phase of our offense that we may be able to get into this year. 57.3 point per game average in the playoffs, which uh, equals a 32.4 margin of victory. Scored 229 points in state playoffs, which was a Utah State record. We've been ranked right nationally several times. One time with the number one mid-sized school, beating out Coach Cam's uh, Saguaro uh, Sabercats. 
And then uh, two state titles in a row, 18th overall in school history, seven state semi-appearances, a five out of state championship appearances. So we've had some success running the football. And so that always starts with our offensive line. We've been blessed with great running backs. We've been blessed with great position skill guys. But we are known for our offensive line. We have a saying on our old line, and they wear a T-shirt that says, roll line. You'll fill it in the morning is what it says on the back. Now, we don't necessarily have a rolling start like some split beer teams. We do set our hands and snap the ball, but because we are more traditional triple uh, by foundation, we utilize a lot of motions, so we can't necessarily, necessarily snap the ball right away. So our roll line is like an 18-wheeler going down the field, and we are down mauling defensive backs and linebackers at the second and third level and trying to get to the end zone with our running backs. Something we take pride in. It's something we get a lot of penalties for, not because they're dirty, but because I think officials find it hard to believe that giant kids can run that fast downfield and make contact with smaller kids and, and really uh, raise havoc down the field like that. And they're not sure they can do anything else but throw a penalty. I'm not going to say it's always right. I'm not going to say it's always wrong, but we get a lot our share of penalties because our guys get down the field so quickly. We believe that we should always be the most physical team, and that starts with our offensive line. Now, I believe that if you talk to like other coaches that we play, I think one of the first things they're going to say in a post-game interview or post-game conversation is, man, that team was physical. So the more physical teams that we played, especially that, that defensive and offensive front, we pride ourselves in that. It's the culture our kids are brought up in. It's the culture we believe in and try to preach in our program. We play physical within the confines of the rules of the game, but we believe that we should always be the most physical team. Um, lead. We lead. We lead in the classroom. We believe in having the highest GPA. We believe we believe we lead in the community. We start and we finish practice. We lead in the locker room. We lead in the hallways. We do all those things. We lead. Our offensive line is and are the leaders of that program and that team. Our, most of our captains come from that group. We believe that's our foundation. So our offensive line believes that. We have pictures from Under Armour all over our stadium, our offensive line, because it's who we are, and that's become our foundation. 4560. If you were to come to our practice and ask any of our guys what our motto is, they would say that pretty quickly. They'd say 4560 sir or 4560 coach. Those are that's our footwork. The most important thing that we do effectively is our first two steps off the line of scrimmage. The first step is always 45 degrees to the play side. The second step is always 60 degrees to the crotch or midline of the man. So 4560 is the most important thing that we do on the offensive line. Okay, and then we stole this from uh, Coach Allen Bond and his De La Salle group years ago when I went out there and visited with them, I think, in 2012. Um, we want to get our first two steps down before they get their first step down. We want to be in the framework of the man on our 60 step before their first step comes out. We want to control the line of scrimmage and move bodies. And then party in the end zone. When I say party in the end zone, we get down the uh, field so fast. If anybody has seen this play, and I know that uh, Coach Cam and Suaro have, our big guys get down the field, and, and they, they make it a competition at times. When the, when the field has been cleared and the blocks have been made, they'll find the running back and try to race them in the end zone at times. And it becomes a competition, and the guys can talk trash if they get there at the same time or a little bit before. It becomes fun for them. So we want the party to start with the O-line. Okay, here's our huddle. Now, huddle and communication. Now, I said earlier we're unique because we do huddle in today's football. And we believe in the huddle for several reasons. Number one, we're an option team. That doesn't necessarily mean we want to milk the clock and slow the game down and, and ground and pound and do all that stuff. We like big plays. We like scoring touchdowns. We like scoring quick also. We feel like we can do both. We can run it out with you if we need to, and we can make big plays and score a lot of points if we have to also or if allowed. Now, our old line, if you can see them right here, this is not the great, greatest representation, but they're all facing the line of scrimmage. Now, the uniqueness of this is, our receivers and backs are facing back-to-back -back with them, so they're facing away from the line of scrimmage. You can see our quarterback standing there looking at the backs of the offensive line. This group was special. From left to right, 55s at Utah State, 53 is playing nose tackle at Washington, 56 uh, signed with UNLV, 74 is a starting guard at Texas, and the last guy, 54, should be the starting center at Utah this year, and that's a special group. So when you look at that group, I mean, you should be able to do a lot of things with those guys. They – they decided they wanted to face the line of scrimmage because they wanted to see their opponent, not for intimidation purposes, but they wanted to be able to see 
who was in the game, what techniques they were potentially going to be in so they could get a, a head start on their calls. And secondly, because we sprint the line of scrimmage, they felt like if they didn't have to turn around or break through a group, if they were facing the line when we snap, when we break the huddle, they could get there quickly and do the things they need to do. So we've kept it that way ever since. Uh, we sprint to the line and we practice all the time. And if we don't go to the line quickly or fast enough, we make them huddle back up and do it again until it's to our liking. We sprint the line and we instantly put our hands on our knees. Once our hands are on our knees, we can move ourselves side to side to make sure that we're in the right splits that we need for that particular play or that particular read. And we need to articulate our, re our techniques and our calls from that bent over position. So hands on knees, hips and knees flexed, head up and back flat. So you're essentially in an athletic stance. And we go from knees to ground. I don't want their hands on their thighs. I want them on their knees. So on their knees, they're all talking their techniques and making their calls. They need to be loud and clear so they all understand what's in front of them, especially if the defensive line stems. They have to re-articulate those reads. We do not allow them to stand and make the call. To me, it looks lazy. To me, it looks undisciplined. To me, it's wasted energy and wasted time. Okay, the basics. Okay, our stance that we get into, and I'll show you a video that we use for our stance and how we, how we do that every single day. Our stance is 60-40, which I know is unusual. A lot of teams today are in a two-point stance. Not a lot of them get in a three-point stance anymore. But we believe in getting down the field, and we have to look the same whether we're throwing the football, which is rare, or running the football. Our stance is 60-40, which means 6% of our weight's on our hands, 40% is back on our feet. We evaluate our stance every single day. In practice film, uh, on huddle, we make notes, we send them to our guys, we hold them accountable for as simple of things as their stance. Um, we always start with hands on knees, like I said, feet are shoulder width apart. We touch the grass and then we fall out three to four inches more. So we want to really make sure that weight is on our hand. The right foot, okay, if you're right-handed, should be to the inset, your toe should be the inset of your left foot and be up off the ground an inch. The other foot, the left foot down, should have just barely a little space underneath it so it's barely skimming grass. Feet no more than two inches outside the frame of your shoulders. This is important because I feel like if you get too wide and your stance is too wide, number one, your hips are inflexible or your knees are inflexible or whatever the case may be, we're not gonna generate as much power and we're, we're gonna pop up instead of go forward. And so we want to make sure that we are no more than two inches outside the frame of our shoulders. And this is how we, you know, in the weight room, we preach that hip flexibility with deep squats and our power cleans and all those things that we do to make sure that we're getting uh, hip flexibility. And then we talk about when we're in that stance, I should be able to set my coffee on your back. I drink a lot of coffee. I've got a cup of coffee here. I drink coffee all day. So coffee's my thing. And I, I make sure we talk about that. But this is a good view. Now, if you look at that, it's a good view of our huddle. You see the skills facing towards the quarterback. The O-line facing towards the line of scrimmage, getting ready to sprint forward and get the line to make the play. Okay, 45-60. 45-60 is our steps. The first step is a 45-degree, six-inch step. Now, I heard Coach Allen Baugh talk about yesterday how they measure the steps, and they're the standard. And, you know, we measure ourselves to them in a lot of things that they do. But we don't, we're not that precise. You know, we feel like we have these bigger bodies and six inches might mean something different to some of our bigger bodies and our smaller bodies. So we try to make sure those, uh, we say six inches, but if we're seven, eight, or nine, and I know that that goes against the belief and, and what they say, and they're much better than we are. But that six inch step can vary. But we preach six inch step, and it's a quick six inch step to the play side hip of the man. The second step is a 60 degree step to the midline or crotch of the defender. So 45-60, 45-60. When we take the 45-degree step, we cock our hands back in our, our hip pockets, and we call that holstering our guns, and then we fire our hands with our second step. We've changed that now to firing a flipper. So we take the play side arm and fire a flipper in the backside hand. Okay, We want to be in the second step before the defender has completed his first. Okay, with the second step comes play side fit, flipper, backside hand, hand delivery with second step. Like I said a second ago, flat back. I don't want any curve in your back. Hips and shoulders are on an even plane through our progression until contact and rise on the defender. I'll show you some sled work we did. It's an early film, so some of it's not so good, but uh, you'll get the idea how we evaluate this here in just a minute. So the flat back, no curve, essential. And then we use a two by four. We take a two by four, we cut it in two foot pieces. 
you know, I paint them red and my little nine-year-old and seven-year-olds decorate them, you know, however they want. They take pride in that. We use those every day to put by their feet to make sure they're picking up their foot and putting it over that two by four. So we're getting that six inch step and making sure we're putting that foot up and, put, and putting it back down the ground. We never want lateral movement. That's something we never want. We always want our feet to be going forward. So if we have lateral movement, we're consistent with that. We've got to find someone who's going to go forward. If we're lateral and that defender's coming forward, we're going to be unsuccessful. We want to move bodies off the line of scrimmage, and we want to get off those bodies and get to second level in a hurry, and we want our body going forward. So any false steps, any lateral steps, any of those things are evaluated daily, and we want to make sure that we eliminate those things. Okay, so our line splits. <clears throat> Just stay with the basics, and I'll show you film on all this stuff. The center always sets the line. So the center goes first. He sets the ball. Everyone else lines up with their head breaking the plane of the center set. Now, a lot of teams do this, and we get called on a lot because we really do push the envelope. Our guards have to come up and set their stance when they're in their three-point stance. Their head has to break the plane of the center's hip, and then the tackle feeds off of that. So we have to make sure that is equal and set every day. And we get a lot of calls on that because coaches like some teams like to hug the football, and they don't understand why we're so far back. And we'll get calls on that that call back big plays, but we are not breaking the rules. Sometimes we're a little further back than we need to be, but we make sure that we coach that, we preach it, we have a coach line up down the line of scrimmage every single day and watch to see to make sure our guys are lined up appropriately and not too far back. But we push the envelope as far as we can to make sure that head is on the plane or breaking the plane of the center step. It's important to us because – we, from midline to triple, our reads are going to vary. And for us, angles are everything. And so we create better angles, we feel, and we can get up on a defender quicker at the further back off the football we are, especially a team is defending. It gives us some time, gives us angles, allows us to get under a three technique on midline a lot quicker than it would if we were up on the football and that guy could come off the ball on us quickly. Okay, the tight end tackle splits start at a foot-to-foot. And then just from there, the guard tackle splits are four feet by, by uh, foundation, and the guard center splits are three feet. We can vary those splits depending on whom we're playing, depending on uh, the defender that we're reading. If we want to get them further away from our read, we'll move them out. We'll move you out as far as you allow us to. Note, though, we always treat a gap defender because a lot of teams like to play gap defenders on us in a B gap. We always treat him as a three technique, and if we're running triple, we'll, we'll run a combo on you or a tandem block. Okay, so the option O-line rules and communication. First, I said this earlier, we always talk techniques. I got a shade, I got a three, I got a two I got a four. We make sure we understand what those techniques are across the front. And then we identify the read key. We have Pacific Islander names for those read keys, which I can't pronounce. Um, primarily, we call the ghost. The ghost could also be a dummy call. So when we're making a, a read key call at the line of scrimmage, and we're saying, for instance, one of our Polynesian calls is Ua. And we say Ua at the line of scrimmage. And we identify that read key, the backside read may say ghost. So we always make sure on an, on an option play we have some semblance of a dummy call on the backside. So we always identify the read key. So as our A backs, our slots run up, and they're identifying who number two is, and they're yelling out stuff, our old line is constantly talking to the progression of the cadence. They never stop talking. And to me, you know, Mike Krzyzewski said a team that is always talking, whether or not they're, they're making sense or not, is intimidated because they sound like they know what they're doing. So we've always, I've always taken that and applied it to my teams. Rules. Rules stay the same for everything that we do. Gap, combo, backer. Now, these rules that I developed within our program back in like 2002 really comes from gap down backer, which you'll find in a wing T program. But we say gap combo backer. So the man in your gap, you block the man in your gap. The man in your gap with the guy next to you, gap, combo. Nobody in your gap, you go to backer. So gap, combo, backer. It stays consistent across the front, whether you run a midline, triple, or outside beer. Okay, and then understanding and identifying fronts. We're talking about odd fronts a little bit today. So when our center comes to the line, if he has a shade or a nose on him, regardless of what defensive front you're in, he's always going to say odd. And we start the calls that way. He'll come up and say odd, odd, odd. So he knows he has a nose. Everybody knows he's got a man on him. Ace or deuce. We always start cadence with, with ace or deuce. Ace or deuce, we're identifying linebacker. So 
if you have a two linebacker set, like a 4-2-5, a 4-4, a 3-4, our quarterbacks can identify, point at them, and say deuce-deuce. If you have an ace backer set in a, in a three stack or you have a 4-3, we'll identify that as an ace call. And what that does for us is when we set our hands at the line of scrimmage, when we go from our knees to a set position, our 60-40, but it also tells us it allows the guard and tackle and, and play side A back if they need to give each other help on any specific play without identifying looking. So, for instance, if we're running midline and I get a deuce call, my play side slot, when he inserts, his rule is inside, outside safety. So inside backer, outside backer, safety. If he gets a ace call, it's outside safety. So if I have a deuce, say A back can look over, identify what number that guy is real quick, take a glance, knows that that guy can scrape over the top, he may have to block him. He has to identify 52, 47, number three, whatever the case may be. An ace call, he can identify who we call number two, the outside backer. He calls an ace, he looks outside backer, he'll insert and go right to outside unless he fills and will climb to safety. So the ace and deuce call it has a whole bunch of elements to it, but that's the very, very smallest detail that we have, the best explanation I can give for that. So we get that every time. Smash is a call that we make amongst other things. If we have a blitzer or a gap combo backer may be off and it turns into a down scheme for us, if we have a linebacker step into a gap, whether they're bluffing or not, we'll get a smash call um, to make sure we know that we're going to go to a down scheme. And even if that guy backs off, we can still run our play effectively. So smash, smash, smash. We know that I'm gone. I can't help you with that combo. You've got to get off the ball quickly and get your head across his, his, uh, his stomach. And then Alabama versus scoop. I put Alabama on there. It's really SEC. So we've always scooped in triple option on the backside. And we still scoop. And you'll see film on here where we're scooping. Scooping's a hard thing to do, I think, in terms of trying to get there quickly without sometimes getting called for uh, chop blocks and getting caught and pushing guys in the play. If you don't get off the ball quick enough, scooping has always been an element that frustrates me. And so we went out to Georgia Tech and we saw them doing some things with this where they fan block backside and we've adopted it and we call it SEC. And so we'll just identify different schools in the SEC and make that call. And instead of scooping underneath the guy, we'll fan block back towards uh, the guy. So if we have a four eye and a nine on the backside, my guard and tackle will fan block on the backside. It's off. We'll call scoop when we have calls for scoop, like ice cream and different things like that, that we'll call if a linebacker steps up and we have to have a true scoop. So the Alabama or SEC call has worked out well for us this past year. We'll probably continue to do it. The scoop call for us is something I, you know, is part of our offense, but it's not something I prefer to do much anymore. Okay, so triple versus a regular 5-2. I think it would be better. Let me see here. If I show you on our playbook, okay. So, can you guys see that play? Okay, Jim. Okay. So here is our play. Uh, this is 23. We call our, we number our formations. This is a three formation for us. Okay. So hence three and then 23. So we're going to talk about running this against an odd front, just a basic odd front. Okay. A three, four, five, two, whatever you want to call that. This is how we diagram the basic triple option. Okay. The first man on the offensive tackle for us. Okay. On or outside is number one. So we always identify the four iron wider as number one. Now, obviously, basics of triple. We're always going to read the first guy outside A back and midline. We're going to read the first guy outside B gap and triple. We're going to read the first guy outside C gap and, and outside here. So those are our three basic rules of read key. If we're running triple option or midline here, the four eye technique is our read keys. First guy both outside A and first guy outside B. So our four eye technique is number one. We identify our read key outside B as number one. Our nine technique, or our ghost nine out here, is number two. He's the second guy on or outside the tackle. So one, two, we're reading both of those guys. Now, by rule, okay, starting from left tackle inside. Our left tackle, our play side tackle here, we call our triple option 23 to the left. Our left tackle is going to do what we call a loop block. 
Okay, and I'll show you this on film in just a minute. A loop block for us means we're going to take our 45, 60 degree step towards the play side hip of that four eye, and we're going to press that reed key and climb to the outside hip of that play side linebacker. Okay, if the linebacker is straight on the top and we're having problems with them, we're going to load him with our play side hand. The second guy is our pitch key. So we have dive. Number two is our pitch. So this is basic where we leave two reads in the line of scrimmage. Now, Backside guard is going to help on the nose. He's going to go 45, 60 to nose, punch and react to that backside middle linebacker. We're going to scoop up a combo on this nose, unless we call an SEC school, scoop the backside safety with the backside tackle. Okay, send the guy in motion for pitch. Now, with this said, our quarterback will come up, get a deuce call. We'll set our stance. He will then say hot, hot. Hot for us means that we're going to get some semblance of a blood stun, which is tackle and this defensive end crashing hard off the edge, probably dive and quarterback. Hot tells the backside A back, the pitch is coming quick, be ready, okay? And if we can get the blocks on the perimeter, we get the pitch out here, we've got a pretty good scheme. The next way we're going to approach uh, a 5-2 is we're gonna call what we, we're gonna run what we call combo. Now combo for us, means we're going to give our quarterback one read of the line of scrimmage, which in essence is kind of an outside beer idea, but we're still running an inside beer path. So our guard and tackle are now going to combo block the four or the four eye. We're going to tandem block him and try to get him back to this play side backer. We're going to go to what we call three tight. So we have four foot split here, three foot split here across the board, three and four. The receivers in a two point stance will be in a five foot split. Play side receiver is responsible for smashing that play side middle linebacker. Okay, play side A back is responsible for that play side monster, play side strong safety. And then we're going to attack if we pull, we're going to attack and pitch off the corner. We feel that we need to block the safety. He's probably the better tackling defender of the two, so we're going to leave the corner in space, and sometimes he falls across a formation that's irrelevant anyway. Okay, so we're going to combo. Again, we're going to combo number one leaving a one-man read in a 5-2 front, and this has been very, very successful for us. Uh, we installed it a couple of years ago. We started running against a team that's really our nemesis in Bingham. They run this defense against us, and they have really, really good players. And we, we had a lot of success with it because this guy all week has been taught to get dive, but suddenly he's getting blocked, and it leaves this guy not knowing what to do. We'll scoop. Now, with our play sides, with our center on this play side hip, 45-60. What we want our center to do is we're not going to worry about this guy too much unless he's, uh, you know, an All-American, whatever, and then we'll give support. But our centers are usually pretty good. So we're going to go 45-60, and we're going to put our right shoulder, if we're going left, in the play side hip of this nose tackle. That is our goal. And we want to get him to flip his hip so he's perpendicular to the line of scrimmage because we feel like we hit it fast enough. If we can do that, we make him irrelevant. So we want to press hard to that play side hip, get him to turn, and then work levels. That allows us to do this SEC fan block on the back side. So, again, we want our center to get low, flat back, 45-60, play side hip of that center, and get him to turn. Okay, and then finally, we have um, – this is still combo. We have our – what we call tech. Okay, still a five-man front, an odd front. We now, now we're doing a little bit something different. Okay, we're going to pull the play side tackle. And what this does for us, it does one of two things. If this guy is a hands-on guy and he's not a blood stunt defender, if he gets his hands on our guy and tries to reach with him or attack him, it opens up that gap and we give the ball. If he crashes right there, we're pulling the ball and pitching, and we can attack the perimeter because now I've essentially got three guys out here blocking on the perimeter for my guy. We're going to take that three-tight look, crash him to backer, and now we've got number two right here. And you'll see on film, most of the time these guys crash anyways. As soon as he comes down, you see my quarterback should probably keep it, but to his, his credit, he made the right decision. Nose tackle is still the same thing. We're going to press that inside play side hip, get him to turn perpendicular and work the backside backer, and then we're going to fan on this backside. Now, sometimes what we'll get in this corner, sorry, this A back's going to go up and get the corner. Sometimes what we'll get out of this wide receiver, though, because we have plays where we'll get this play side number two or play side end. Um, he'll come down and down the read key and not work his way up the play side back. And that causes problems, and we, don't, we get tackled downfield by the guy he was supposed to block. So we want to make sure he understands that. He's a physical blocker, and he gets that play side back. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple of drills that we do.
Okay, let's see. Okay, so here is our, our, our stance stuff. This is from a couple of years ago, so this is pretty old. Um, we've lost a lot of stuff. I don't know if we didn't have enough memory or whatever, but you know, we've lost stuff in, in, in the meantime. So we'll, this will have to make, some of these will have to make do. So we put them in a grid like this and we line them all up. We try to put them by position, by center, guards, tackles, so on and so forth, all the way back. It doesn't have anything to do necessarily with who's a starter and who's not. We're trying to evaluate everybody is I have a coach here. I have a coach back here somewhere walking around and usually I'm up front. Typically what we like to do, and we'll do this on a daily, is we'll have quarterbacks line up here and they'll call out the cadence. But since this is spring football from a couple of years ago, um, I was doing it because our quarterbacks, we don't have a lot of time in spring. They were doing their drills uh, on the other side of the field. So here's our here's our stuff. So you'll see this is the center you're going to see on film. He's a special player. Um, their stance is good here, hands on knees, their head is up. He's being a little lazy. This is terrible. This is a rounded back. He's looking at the ground. This is not something that we like. You know, this is good here. This is good here. He's getting down low and lazy. There's all sorts of things you can critique here. But again, remember, this is like, this is April. So what I want you to get out of this is to see how they're standing. This is how we approach a line of scrimmage with our hands on our knees. As I call it the cadence, ace, ace, deuce, deuce, they should throw their hands on the ground. Now, you'll see, you'll see that we've got a round back already. Some of their feet, you'll see, will externally rotate when they set their hips down or their hand down, which tells me their hips are not that flexible, and we've got to do a lot more work on that. So our center is really the one you need to focus on. That's a great stance right there for us. It's a nice flat back. And then I'll say the cadence. And our cadence, after deuce deuce, is down, ready, set. And we want to make sure that our guys are getting off on the S and set. So we emphasize the S and set. So the, as the ball is being snapped, we're getting off the football. So ace, ace, hand set, down, reset, and we get off the football. Cadence used to be longer. People were stemming on us too much, so we shortened up that cadence. So again, here's our stance. I'll call it the cadence. You'll see them holster their guns. They'll take their first step, their 45, take their second step, their 60, to the midline of the man, and we work this every day. And this is probably the very first day we got together as a team in the spring a couple years ago. So it's not as aggressive and violent as you maybe see at the end of the year, especially on those first steps. We want those to be quicker. They're a little lazy, but you can see how they're holstering those guns and getting ready to fire. Again, same thing. Right here, this tackle, his stance is pretty good in the red shirt. Showing off his six pack. Hand placement for the left hand is, is not as important to me. Some of them hold it right out in front of them. Some will hold it down by their other hand. I want it to be comfortable. Um, so it's not as important, but you'll see left step. That's too big of a left step right here for him. He's a little bit off balance. You can see him wobble. And then second step should be 60. Okay, so this drill right here, this is terrible. I apologize. This is very grainy, but it'll show you. This is what I wanted to show you right here. I, this is the two by four drill that we use. So we use it for other things also when we pull on our counter trays and things of that nature, we'll have them pull over the boards. But you can see we set the board to their left if we're going left, left foot first. So board is set here, it's a two by four, it's painted red. We have guys stand here with the bag and that can be good or bad. I mean, some of these guys hold them a little late, more lazy than others and some hold them a little bit more aggressive than others, so they take it personal. But what we want to do, this is a, a film of us doing it before we used our flipper. We want to go left foot 45 over this. So we have to force them to gain ground and step over the two by four. And then the 60 degree step should come right over the outside plane of this board right here as we're making contact with that back. Now, this young man right here is a starting tight end for us, 14. Um, he's got several offers from around the country. He's a good player. Um, I, I, he'll probably get off the ball pretty quick. His steps should be pretty good here. And they're not, they're not bad. They're better than the other guy. But you'll see here as he steps, 45, 60, it's a pretty good job. He's making contact with his shoulders. He's got his head on the right side. We're a little high on the bag. I'd like him to be lower so he's more flat back before he raises. I don't like grabbing the side of the bag, but I guess that's the nature of our equipment and how we have to, how we have to perform. The middle guys get off the ball exceptionally slow, which is not something that we like to do at East. But, again, you see the 45. Let's see if I can pause it. 45 right there, 60 coming over the outside plane of the board. Pretty good base, pretty good back, pretty good contact.
Okay, now it's a young group, group right here, a young freshman. This kid does a pretty good job, and I think you'll see his outside foot, his second step never really goes over the board. I think it just, go, it just goes forward. It doesn't really swing go, go where it needs to go, and he gets himself a little spun out of control. Okay, back, let's look at our sled work that we like to do. And much like De La Salle, we do the same thing, but we only have one sled. We don't, we don't have money to get more than one sled. But this is uh, this guy's like 400 pounds. This guy's like probably 250. So these poor suckers are having to move them. But you'll see we're off set just a little bit to make sure that we're getting to that play side hip and taking a good step. So we're 45, should be a 45 degree step and a 60. You'll see as we get in this stance right here, like my left guard, he externally rotates. And this is old film also. He'll rotate his feet just like that and poke his knees out. To me, he, he needs to get a little bit more flexible in his ankles and his hips because he's externally rotating right there. But you'll see we like to make a platform with our shoulder. We like to hit – we like to – we tell them to grind on the ground right here. We want to throw that hand up into the armpit of the, of the defender. Pretty good across the board. We know when you don't trust yourself, when you have to wrap your arms around the bag like the guy on the right. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure we make a platform. We can see him almost tackle the bag. He's creating bad habits. But, again, this is early. So right step, we'll say right step, left shoulder. And it'll go 45, 60. But I do like – I like his base. I like his base. The other guys are a little bit more narrow for my liking. But, again, it's early. And we'll do this. Every day in the spring without pads on, we'll do this every day in the season. We'll do this every day in the postseason. We'll do it all the way to the state championship game. We film it every day. We don't ever feel like it's perfected. Again, here's another look. I hope it's not too grainy. I know some of this film gets grainy on there. I'll try not to slow it down too much because I know that can, that can jack it up. Just pay attention to their feet, right foot, left shoulder. Fire off the ball in sequence, make contact, move bodies. Now we should be going left step, and there we have it. See this step right here? He's losing ground. Okay, we, we took him out of guard. He wasn't doing our job at guard. This is a little bit too much for me. He's reaching. He's off balance. This is too big of a step. Our center's got too big of a step here, but his leverage is good. I don't know what this is, but he's already making contacts a little early. It looks like he's off off uh, his tilt a little bit. This isn't bad, but he needs to have two feet on the ground right here at contact. Okay, let's look at some film. I know the other guy went over a little bit, so I want to make sure that we get everything in that you want to see here. Um, Okay, this is us versus Bingham. Now, I want to skip this one. I'm going to come back to it. So here is a basic triple option play from the end zone. This is from this year. Now, what, what we should get here is a loop. We should get a loop from our play side tackle. We should get this guy, our play side guard. We're going 23. We're going left. Here's number one. Here's number two. Okay, we want to make sure we should get a hot call here. We should get a blood stunt coming off the edge. We want this guy to take a 45-60 here to the nose, work his way to backside linebacker. Center should work his way to that play side hip, work his way to backside linebacker. I can't remember if we scoop or not on this play, but if we scoop, we should get up under the nose. If not, we're going to make sure we fan outside right here. Now, this guy right here should go get the perimeter. I think our guy here ends up blocking the read key instead of going up and blocking the guy that makes the tackle. If we block the guy at number 12 right there, we're in pretty good shape. So. 23. Now, our tackle should loop this and press and get to number 48 right here and seal this off. And we should have a pretty good play. We should, because we're in an odd front, get a quick mesh and pitch right here and get to the edge in a hurry. And I'm going to rewind it a little bit so you guys can see it because it might be grainy on there. So I'm going to let you see the full film. Watch play side offensive line, guard and tackle coming off. 
The defense slants to their defensive left to the field side, so it helps us out a little bit. Quick pitch. Get up there. We block number 12. We're in pretty good shape. If we get our receiver to block the correct guy instead of the read key, he comes down any false steps. It's, it's all ugly. The whole thing is ugly. But this is a playoff game. So, you know, this is the end of the year. So these are high school kids. You're always, as you guys know, you're always correcting mistakes. But other than that, it's a pretty good play. Good mesh, quick pitch, get up the field, and then away we go. Okay, next play right here coming towards us. We should get a combo. Now, they slide over. This is no longer – even though this is an odd front, this is not an odd look for us, okay? So our quarterback audibles because we're going to our offensive left, their defensive right, and he counted numbers. So one of the things my – when well, it's not a quarterback clinic, but it'll always count numbers first. So we count numbers, we count angle, we look at angles, and then we look at fish, guys that we want to attack. So this is a combo. So he's audible into a combo. So even though this is looks like a three, it's more of a gap for us. So we're going to combo this guy right here, tandem block here, go back to this backside backer. We actually make a pretty good play because I think this is like third and 12 or so. So we, we actually get a first down here, and, and these guys do a nice job. Not a bad tandem, pretty good footwork right here. Now, because he's a shade, our rule changes. He's not going to go play side unless we have a play side threat. So he should block back on this nose so this guy can get up and scoop. Quick pitch. And see, we've comboed them a couple times. The guy on the edge it is really – team. they're high school kids, so they get a little clueless. Even though that guy should be a quarterback defender, he keeps coming down to die. So, our, you know, our quarterback could keep and, and attack the edge, but we like getting the ball in the hands of our athletes, and that's what he's doing here. He's got a quick mesh. Our running back looks like he has the football in his hands. Quick pitch, get it out there, and we get a first down off the edge right here. Average perimeter blocking by our A-back, but we, we get the job done. One more time, 24 combo, one read, pitch, away we go. And there's not, the only time we don't read an option play is if I call zone. If I call zone, we don't read it. We give the football, but every option play that we have, we read. Okay, so this is a good one. This is our tech. And you'll see there on an odd front, he's slightly shaved. We've got a four eye here. We've got a four eye here. We've got uh, ghost nines out here, stand up outside backers. We've got a deuce backer set with their heels at five. We've got two safeties in the box right here. Now, we audible the other direction here. He told me he thought there was more numbers on this side. I think it's pretty equal, but it's okay. It works out fine. Where we don't do great, okay, is we don't block well, great on the perimeter down the field, we end up blocking the wrong guys, or we hover too long and get caught watching the play. So as we go through this, we should get 45, 60 to nose to backside backer. We should get play side hip on the nose tackle to backside backer. We should get an SEC call right here, unless this guy steps up in this gap, and we're going to get a pull on our tackle to that play side safety. We're going to get an arc release to that play side corner from our A back, and we should get a block right here on this back from our play side receiver. What happens is my receiver ends up looking in here as he crashes on dive, and the corner ends up running inside, and number three right here ends up kind of sitting and watching also. They should have gotten up and blocked number 12 and continued on their path to block that backside safety, 38. But instead, we got caught watching. We still got a big play out of it. I'll show you the whole thing through just in case it's glitchy. But it's a really, really good way to attack a 50 front. Quick pitch and down the sideline as we go. Now, as you can see, our quarterback could probably keep the ball and run off the edge. And we've had quarterbacks could do that. This necessarily wasn't his best um, ability, I should say. Uh, good kid, great. He, he did a great job of leading this team in the state semis. But if we look at this right here, the, the defensive end, the outside guy, number two, he does step up field just ever so slightly. And so it looks like he's going to slow play us, but then he turns down the last second and goes after dive. And we pitch the ball quick and down the sidelines we go. One more time, I'll let you watch that from the beginning in case it's glitching on you on, on your end. 
gets this odd front. Our numbers are on the outside. We want to make sure we quick pitch, get out and get to the perimeter as fast as we can and make sure we have great perimeter blocking. Okay, I'll show you, um, I'll show you triple option out of trips for us versus an odd front. Here, we're gonna go a slot motion right here to a twirl pitch. Okay, this guy had never played slot before in his life. We were down to one running back and it was him. And this guy was, he was like a third or fourth string guy. This guy was a safety. We had to move to eight back to the state championship game. This guy's playing at the University of Utah, and he blows his knee out on this play. He hits the cameraman on the sidelines. So we lost this the first series of the game. So we have number one here. We have number two here. Same team, different year. Both these guys are going to crash hard to dive. Our quarterback does a nice job of gaining depth after the mesh and attacking and pitching downfield. Now, what we don't do a good job of, this new guy, is getting out and blocking the perimeter. So he should be out here blocking the perimeter. He does not do a very good job of that. So – but nonetheless, we get a good play out of it, and you can't fault guys for being installed in an offense the week before it happens. So we're going to look at this from the beginning. Case is glitchy. Should get a deuce call here as we set. And this is a good observation. I'll pause it real quick. It's a good observation of how our line sets with depth. Okay, we're a little closer out here, but through the hip, the plane of the hip of our center. Great pitch downfield, great run and finish right here. It's, it's just a tragedy that we lost this kid to a cameraman down the sidelines. But our quarterback, he thinks about tucking and running. And he needs to keep that ball at his chest and run with it his chest so he can always pitch the ball right here. I don't fault him for it because he's a good athlete. It's a great pitch. I just would have taken a little bit sooner. If he could have pitched it right here, we might have a chance to score. Because that number 21, is he can fly now. Okay, and then the last way that we attack, um, the last way that we attack a, uh, um, a, an odd front, okay, this is not it. I don't know how this ended up in here. This is not a, this is not an odd front, and this is, uh, this is De La Salle. This is a zone play. We don't, we don't have a re key on this. We just hand the ball and everybody blocks man on man. This is a whole different thing here. And you do that if you have a really good back and, and good offensive line. But what we do have, we like to run midline triple against an odd front. Now, when they got into their odd front with their nose, this is the baddest nose tackle we've ever played against. And, and he started for the University of Washington now at nose. Um, our, our center had his hands full. And he was a pretty good player, but he beat the hell out of our center. This, mid, this is midline pitch for us, or it's midline triple. So we still have a triple read, but we're going to read the inside technique at A-gap, and then we're going to read. We're going to have a second reader pitch guy at number, at number one. So really, he's number one. We don't label a guy inside. He's just a three technique. So we should get a counter motion here out of this guy, and this guy is our pitch. And we actually, this play was a pretty good play against them. We'd never seen him run this front before, and we don't know if we forced him into it or, or it was something they planned for, but it, this midline pitch was a great play for us against them. Our quarterback attacks that play side defensive end. He opens up. He presses that inside shoulder, pitches to our little layback. Pretty good perimeter blocking downfield, and we get a good game. Again, I think I have one more of those on here. Another midline pitch right here. Our strong side. You can see our big splits. Okay, We're a little bigger on the inside when they went to this front because we're trying to get rid of that three technique and get them out of the play. Yeah, midline pitch, and he get, he got a give get a give call, and the young man does the rest for us. You see our play side guard coming up. He misses number thirty one, the play side backer. Uh, our nose attack, our center doing play side nose. But here's an example of why we don't love to scoop. Our play side guard, who's a major Division one football player, knocks the guy into the play side. So we're trying to get rid of this type of play. It's, it's just a hard thing to do. And those are talented guys. And then you'll see our guys downfield. You'll see my big guard running downfield with my running back. And he's smart here. He peels back and he just scares the guy. He doesn't hit the guy. So he get, don't get a penalty. And then he's running down the field.
And I think this is my last one, Coach. Um, again, this is midline triple, counter motion. We see our guys getting up underneath, 45-60, gaining ground, 45-60, ripping through, getting to play side back with our play side tackle, leaving that three technique alone, climbing up the play side, inside hip of the backer. We get number 11 right there. Putting a, a really good play. Counter motion again to the perimeter to go block the edge. And our quarterback, if he doesn't trip, he, he may go the distance. So, again, there you go. There's our uh, – um, that's our offense in a nutshell against an odd front. Um, I, I hope that uh, uh, I hope that uh, you guys have any questions. You can email me or call me or text me or whatever you want to do, and I'd be happy to share anything that you guys have, any question you guys have. We're, we're an open book, like I said, and, and we'll give you anything that you need. Um, please call and ask those things. I don't even know how, Jim, how that little chat thing works on this thing. I can't even see it, so I don't know how to answer those questions. But I don't have um, – a lot more to give you than that, um, unless you want to call or you want to ask me some questions. Yeah, is, uh, is there any questions out there, guys? Any questions for anybody? Use the chat function at the bottom. I'm trying to see it, Coach. Oh, there we go. Now I got it. Um. Yeah, man, I, I don't see any questions on there. Uh, oh, are you using your SEC call on midline triple? Uh, we are. We use uh, that on midline triple, and we use it on, on triple option. We primarily started using uh, the, the SEC calls on um, our tech call, our tech play, but we transitioned for that and use it on triple as well. The only thing that was giving us a problem, if that backside linebacker stepped up in that backside A-gap and we had a check to a scoop, Again, you're relying on high school kids. You have to rep it a lot to make sure you get that down clean, especially if it's a late, if it's a late stem on their part. And that's why we try to make our cadence as quick as possible. And if they're doing it and they're catching us off guard and they're able to stem, or stem successfully with their linebackers, we'll go on first sound and get off the ball a lot quicker. We won't go up and set the way we normally do. We'll go up already set. That's good, Coach. Hey, Coach, uh, question. Uh, in your install, in your, like, generic, just basic stuff, how much time do you – how do you segment it? How do you set up, uh, you know, your installs for your offensive linemen? That makes sense. Yeah, it sure does. And so we've done it – we've been di we've been different over the years. We're going to change this year our practice schedule. But in years past, um, you know, we have, we're, able, we're able to go spring practice in Utah now, which means we can do anything football-wise without equipment. So we usually go an hour of offense on Tuesdays, an hour of defense on Thursdays. We could go every day if we wanted to, but to me it's overkill uh, in the spring, especially with these kids that are playing spring sports. We're not a very big school. and We have to share a lot of kids, and we do have a lot of kids that go both ways. So we want to make sure we just do a couple hours a week in offense and defense. But the, where we set our basis for our offense is we, we do our stance every day, and that's a five-minute segment, and then we do our sled every day, which is a 10-minute segment. And then what we'll do is we'll go into our, uh, our group work. And while we're doing plays, so while we're running triple option, the slots are the A backs that we call them, and the B backs are running the exact same play at the same time. So we typically try to have an option play, a counter play, and a pass play. So we try to have the run, the counter, and the pass on every play. So three plays to one on each one. And try not to make it more complicated than that. So while we're doing that in those five-minute segments, if we're running rocket toss, for instance, the Lions practice in rocket toss right, rocket toss left, the A-backs are somewhere else doing their rocket toss, B-backs are doing their – we're doing it at the exact same time. So when we get together, it works out well. And we've all learned the same things at the same time, just not collectively together. So in our group work, I'll go over everything. I'll put the boards down. We'll put the odd front up. And we never know what we're going to get, Coach. So we're working against an even front and odd front every day. We'll also work it against double shades and double four eyes, like a goal line front we get often. Um, and we'll run every play against all those fronts every single day. And we'll call counter tray right, counter tray left. And we'll put the boards out so they have to pull over them, rip those shoulders, get perpendicular down the line as fast as they can. We do that pretty quick, and that's a 10-minute segment, and we have those scripted out, and we don't waste energy on those. We just film them so we can do them later. 
Good, good, good. Coach, how much how much time do you uh, do you try to carve out for uh, position meetings and group meetings and whatnot during your during your uh, season? So the plan this year is what we're going to do is we're going to go um, try to do it daily. So we like to do we watch I critique my offensive line film daily, which means I'll I'll film it, get on huddle, and I'll send it out to my guys. And then I'm really me and another guy, our, our old line coach, you could probably present this much more eloquently than I could, and, and, and Coach Bergstrom. Um, we are the only two guys really in the building that can have access to our kid on a, kids on a daily. So we'll try to have our kids come in during lunch, um, depending on what lunch they have, and watch it in the weight room with me, and we'll break down those practices. We put more of a focus on practice than we do our opponent uh, from an offensive standpoint, I think defense is entirely different in terms of how you prepare for your opponent. But for us, we'll show a, key, a couple of key players on Monday. And then uh, the rest of the week, we are spending 20 minutes a day watching ourselves in practice. So we try to etch out. Now we're going to try and etch out 20 minutes at the end of each practice if we don't do it during individual time to make sure that our kids see their prior practice film and we get tr critiqued that way. Does that answer your question, Coach? I'm not sure if that, that's what you're asking. No, that's that's good. That's good. Uh, another another question we have uh, here is um, your indie work drills. How do they uh, – let's see. What is this question? Uh, oh, so I is think you answered work it. And asking about in, in, yeah, indie work, indie work with, uh, you know, fitting into your offense. So um, – I think I think you already touched on that as how you how you uh, shape that in your practice with individual and then come together as a group. Yeah, coach, and we have a great drill that we call gut drill. It will just be our our backs and our quarterback, and we don't even really implement our receivers into that group. And we just we set up a path with bags. So if you take your your little whatever uh, angled bags that are flat on the bottom and, and, and angled at the top, we lay about six of those out for our path. So not offensive line stuff, but our B-backs path is always consistent in triple option. It's hash marks, numbers, sidelines. So we set that path that they get the ball in the mesh, and we have a guy that collisions our guys every day on their rekeys to make sure we're getting real rekeys because I think a coach, we found a coach with a bag trying to give them rekeys doesn't work with our guys. We have to have real-time reads, which means we have to get recruited defensive linemen that takes pride in it, and he has to come down and, and really be aggressive on his reads every day so we get the speed of that down. So that's one thing we'll do is gut drill. We'll call out 23, 24. We'll break the huddle, sprint the line, and we'll run. The fullback then has to step over those bags and then sprint hash marks number sidelines. But as he's sprinting over those bags, regardless if he has the ball or not, we have two coaches standing there beating his legs with two long bags trying to trip him up. So he gets used to getting hit in the legs and breaking tackles. Uh, we do that every single day, and we call that gut drill. We also do what we call leopard pride. And leopard pride is a goal line segment that we do once a week. Uh, sometimes I, I get away from it and don't do it all the time, but we try to do it once a week. I'll just call it leopard pride. The kids get excited. We go ones on ones. We go down on the five-yard line, and I tell the defense to play. And I tell the defense where we're running, who's the read key, where the option is. We're running right here. This is where we're heading. And I let the defense know, and it's our starters. So it forces our guys to work harder and get off the ball faster with their footwork and their speed and, and the way they, they perform off the ball. And it, it's a great thing for us. And it looks sloppy at times because we're not, you know, it's not clean because guys know where the hell they're going on defense. But on, from an offensive standpoint, it creates speed in our mesh. It creates speed in the way we get off the football. And it forces us to be quicker and faster, especially with our defense. Our defense is usually pretty good. And we attack it. And, and defense will win more times than not, but we'll get ours. And at the end of the day, in that five-minute segment, we've been physical. The kids get after each other. They get nasty for a few minutes. And we've learned to read the option a lot quicker than we would if we were just standing there with bags. Sounds and good, again, Coach. And again, man, anybody want to call or visit or – you know, get more film or whatever it is you want, man. Uh, listen, we'll give you anything you want. I'll talk practice game plan with you. I'll talk game plan with you. I'll talk option outside beer, midline, whatever you want to talk about, man. Option is – I was an option quarterback back in the day. So, it's, I've been doing it for – this will be 25 years, man. So, 
it's it's exciting. I love the offense. I'm excited about where we're going with the stuff, new stuff we're going to do. So please hit me up, man, and uh, let me know uh, if anything I can give you. Sounds good, Coach. What, okay, uh, what hey, hey, Coach Cam, thank you, man. You're the best. Love you guys. Yeah, that's it's uh, it's all good. It's good to see you. Maybe uh, sooner and later we can uh, we can get together again. Uh, I would love that, man. Love to get together with the whole crew, man. You guys are great people, and and uh, Martinez and and Jason, all you dudes, man. Let's let's do it. Yeah, it's it's all it's all good. It's all good. Who's uh, who? I'm curious who's on your uh, who's on your schedule. Um. Well, we had Valor. I don't think Valor's going to be able to travel. Valor Christian, they were supposed to come here. I'm not sure Colorado's going to allow that to happen. Um, right now, we have Liberty at Liberty, and um, I haven't heard from Las Vegas of whether or not they're going to be able to travel or not. Uh, we do have contingency plans in place for some local schools here that are, that are high quality, uh, but we had two out-of-state games this year with Valor Christian and Liberty High School. We're excited about Liberty because, you know, I know y'all played them. You know, we have a lot of family connection with those guys, with, with our Pacific Islanders and, and their families. So it'd be a unique, unique situation for us. And um, I hope it happens. I hope we're able to go to Vegas and, and uh, play those guys. I think it'd be a good experience for all the families involved. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, good luck to you.